6.3 billion, 25.4 billion, 160 billion. No, this isn't the money Kanye West will spend to buy the Earth. These are the amounts that were allocated for such space projects as Galileo, a global navigation satellite system, a series of the Apollo space projects, and the International Space Station. People who have nothing to do with the world of science tend to wonder why such large sums are spent on space and not on the problems existing here on Earth. In turn, private investors don't see the point in giving money for space missions that won't recoup their costs. But everything's going to change now. NASA is preparing to conquer Neptune. This mission can not only compensate $3.4 billion spent on the flight, but also bring a handsome profit. In this video, you'll find out how much can a moonstone ring cost, what jewels are so common on Triton that their abundance can be compared to an ocean, and most importantly, how exactly can Neptune be financially beneficial to Earth? A spacecraft called Voyager 2 visited Neptune only once, in 1989. Well, visited may be an overstatement. In fact, the probe just passed it close enough. Of all the planets in the solar system, Neptune and Uranus are the only ones that haven't been studied by spacecraft from a short distance. As for Neptune, it has many intriguing features that may interest scientists. These are rings, weird storms, and finally, the under underwater world of Triton, the planet's satellite. Currently, NASA is preparing a mission with the working title Neptune Odyssey. It's scheduled for launch in 2031. The spacecraft and probe will be equipped with visible light and infrared cameras to take high resolution and quality pictures of the planet and its satellites. But all of that will only happen when the machines reach them in 2043. So it turns out that the mission will start in around 10 years and will show initial results in more than 20. But Neptune Odyssey may become the first project that will completely recoup its cost. That's because its most anticipated part is exploring Neptune's satellite Triton. It'll be exceptionally exciting to see Triton when the weather is dull, since if a sudden rain can cause trouble on Earth, it at the same time can bring millions of dollars on this satellite. Open up your wallets. Weather forecasts say there's going to be a heavy diamond rain on Triton. But how do we get the stones? Scientists believe that diamonds can be formed in the layers of ice found on Neptune and its satellite Triton. Their crystals fall like rain down to the core and create a whole diamond ocean. Perhaps that's where Barnaboy went swimming before making his entrance into the 2021 BET Awards. To prove this hypothesis, researchers at SLAC National Accelerator Laboratory recreated the conditions that resemble those on Neptune and Triton on Earth. Using a free electron laser, they heated styrene to 5,000 kelvins, since this is an approximate temperature deep inside Neptune. Then the pressure was increased to 1.5 million bar, and that's like 250 African elephants standing on a thumbnail. And then carbon that's contained in styrene turned into this beauty. Amazing. If you want to buy a 5 carat diamond, you'll have to spend around $50,000. So it means that to cover the cost of this $3.4 billion mission, NASA need only create a heat-resistant robot. For example, one similar to Wally, and to program it in a way that it collects jewels instead of garbage. To make the expedition break even, we'll need just 68,000 diamonds, 5 carats each. Yeah, it seems we'll need a couple of wallies. And since there are frequent diamond rains on the satellite, it won't hurt to pick up some extra stones, and then spend this money on follow-up missions or charity. It seems that NASA will finally open this cosmic treasure chest, but certain obstacles may hinder our plans, and they are Triton's inhabitants. 
underground oceans on planets and satellites of the solar system are the main places to search for extraterrestrial life. And Triton's core is surrounded by an icy mantle with a frozen crust of ice. And the cherry on top would be a layer of nitrogen ice on the surface. This means there is water, but it's hidden in a big space freezer. Ammonia existing on Triton lowers the freezing point of water to approximately minus 97 degrees Celsius. What living organism can survive conditions like that? I guess that might be something resembling the Roman snail that can be found here on Earth. Without a second thought, you can put it in a freezer, and it'll feel pretty fine after it thaws out. But don't rush to torture poor animals to check this out. It's a scientific fact that this species can withstand a temperature of minus 110 degrees. Some bacteria also can survive minus 250 degrees. The possibility that organisms like that can live in the environment of Triton makes the satellite's ocean potentially habitable. Under such conditions, biochemical reactions slow down, so evolution slows down too. But don't forget that scientists made these conclusions after catching just a short glimpse of Triton with the help of Voyager. And it's not precisely known if there is any life on the satellite. And it's also unknown how Tritonians will react when they see that guests from Earth are stealing their jewelry. But diamonds of Triton aren't the only way to make a fortune off space. There are other options that we just never took into account before. From 1968 to 1972, astronauts of NASA's Apollo program brought 382 kilograms of moonstones to Earth. A federal court estimated the cost of the silicate to be $50,800 per one gram. And no bargaining, because the price was calculated based on the initial investments that the U.S. government provided to receive the samples during the space missions. President Richard Nixon directed that a sample the size of a brick had to be split into separate fragments and sent to 135 world leaders and 50 United States governors. Nixon is Robin Hood in reverse. He ruined many pieces of research by taking the precious moonstone away from scientists and giving the pieces to rich rulers. Some of the gifts mysteriously disappeared. Not that it's a big surprise or anything, but that's okay, since NASA plans to send humans back to the moon in 2028. They just need to remember to bring a giant bucket to collect the stones. The more, the better. Perhaps Jeff Bezos will use them to improve his front yard landscape design one day. And he definitely can afford that. But do you know what else is super popular on a space jewelry market? Asteroid fragments. For example, the asteroid called Psyche that can be observed between Mars and Jupiter was valued at $10,000 quadrillion because it consists entirely of iron and nickel. But I think it won't be easy to find a buyer willing to purchase this asteroid, as then they'll definitely have a lot to explain to tax authorities. That's why the space monetization strategy needs to be carefully planned and developed. If we find a way to make space financially beneficial, we'll be able to increase the share of private investments and accelerate technological progress. What space-related startups can you suggest? I think NASA can sell pictures made by satellites just like NFT. For instance, one unidentified collector paid $1.3 million to buy an NFT whose clip art looks like a regular rock. Can you imagine how much they'll be ready to pay for this Moonstone photo? Please drop a comment with your ideas on how to make money off space.